All right, so I am messy haired. I'm here at my dad's. Uh, it's my dad here with me tonight, and I am unfortunately, uh, well, I'm going to be going back to to Nova Scotia tomorrow. So we decided to do a uh, to do a video, and what I'm doing is I got a a movie pile that I, that I want to talk about, and my dad doesn't know which ones I've chosen from his collection. So I picked some really cool stuff and some weird stuff, and there's some stuff we're going to talk about. Mon Macabre had an announcement today that really got me excited. Hey, Asian movie enthusiasts. Good. I think I got some strange ones here. I hope I do anyway. Uh, so I'm going to turn this down here so I can actually put it up here so that my dad can actually uh, read this when I can't see the, uh, the comments, and hopefully there'll be a few comments. Um, if you know somebody that usually comes in here and uh, they're not in here yet, text them and let them know. We are here. And... Because I forgot to do my usual Twitter, Instagram type of thing. I might even go off and do that in a minute, actually. Um, but for now, let's let's start up. Hey, Kathy. Hey, you finally got in. Kathy, actually, I've been talking to Kathy for a few days now. And she keeps saying, I want to see your video. And uh, and you just keep missing me. You just keep missing me every time. Um, all right. So everybody, I guess, has heard about the Mon Macabre announcement for the... Uh, for, you want to bring it up? Do you got Mono Macabre here, right? So, Mono Macabre announced all the, the features and for their big October movie that's coming out, uh, they, they've got a new website coming out too, as well. Uh, and the this may be the first time you've been to order from the website with the new one. You want to bring that down a little bit so we can see it uh, as it comes in? So, anyway. If you're a Paul Nashi fan, you're going to be pretty excited about this. Uh, they announced it er earlier on, uh, but we're finally going to be, we finally got like the features and the cover and stuff like that. So go up a little bit so we can get all the features in there. So go see more. Um, all right. So they announced the Beast and the Magic Sword. It is coming in October. So this is going to be a Halloween release. The Beast and the Magic Sword is a, uh, is a Paul Nashi film. It's one of the ones they did over, they did over Japan, right? Yeah. So he did it over in Japan. And um, for the longest time, it was extremely hard to find. And whenever you found it, it was in a really crappy, really, really kind of grimy version. At least for me. My dad has found some, some decent copies from questionable places. First time here. And ready. Dude, you're going to have to get this one. This is excellent. This is one. I, I like this one. This is one of Nashi's big ones oh, for yeah, me. Oh, yeah. If you're a Nashi fan like me, you need and and the big And the cool thing about that is there's some fe if you're not a Nashi fan or if you're new to Nashi, there's some cool stuff here feature wise that you're going to be uh that you're going to be excited about so either as a as a diehard nashi fan or somebody that's like just coming in and they want to know about nashi uh this is a good one so we get a brand new 4k restoration from the negative uh and uh this is one with uh chichiro mifune right Mifune did was he in no, that or just the, no, studio? Just, just, just the studio just the studio but uh Anyway, so it's a region-free disc, so no matter where you live, if you're watching this from, uh, from Scotland or Ireland or Sweden, uh, this is something that you can get. Mono Macabre will have it out. There is going to be a limited edition red case, uh, which I do want. Uh, there, this one has a Carvel introduction of the film by Paul Nashi. Uh, there is a brand new interview with Gavin Badley, author of Fright Fest's Guide to Werewolf Movies, which should be really fun. There's a brand new commentary by Rodney Barnett. And Troy Gohn of the Nashi cast. I put that one, that podcast on. Have you listened to it yet? Any of those? Their stuff? The limited edition has a reversible cover with brand new artwork. Uh, there's going to be a, a set of lobby cards and a booklet here. Uh, what's really cool about this one, Kathy, I left one feature for last. And this is one that's, that's kind of cool and it's kind of exciting. And uh, there was a documentary, an archival documentary that's done called Smile of the Wolf. Uh, and it's a documentary on all of Nashi's werewolf films. So if you're going in like you're going in blind, say this is your first Nashi werewolf film, this literally goes through. It goes I think it goes in like four four different chapters, like four four eras of Nashi. And uh you get to uh to to listen to Nashi talk about and see pictures of uh like scenes from all of his werewolf films. So if you're a fan of werewolf movies, if you're a fan of Nashi, if you're just going on for the very first time, it is a great way to uh, to get yourself into uh, into some nasty stuff, so uh, Kathy, this is a really good way to do it. Hey, B Movie Archives, it is going good. I'm excited about uh, Beast and the Magic Sword. Uh, you're excited about it, right? Oh yeah. My dad is like super rated. Or this, what's the one you ordered today? You ordered one today. 
Mummy's Revenge. See, you ordered another nasty one today, Mummy's Revenge. I'm not as familiar with the Mummy's Revenge as you are, so how does that one go? How's... Well, it's a great movie. It's hard to explain it, really, you know. But it's, well, I'm a nasty fanatic, so whatever he puts out, I'll buy. I'm going to take a, a, lot of them. a shot in the dark, and I'm going to guess there's a mummy, and he, and he wants revenge. Is, is that in it? Actually, it's, it's not. There's not in it. A mummy that actually uh, doesn't want revenge. He's kind of like he's he he's two, iffy. Two parts in it, sort of. Oh. I'm not sure. I, I don't know if this is the one where the mummy speaks or not, but it, his outfit is different than any other mummy. <laughs> so now it does. Now this is scorpion, right? Scorpion video put it out. But you know, like feature wise, it do. What's there's not a lot of features on. There's a couple I like, think. There's two secret prints out. So I'm not sure. I guess European print and the American print and the interview with Troy Albert. I don't know if anybody knows who he is. Yeah. He's wrote, written a few books on that, and he's written a book on Nashi. Exactly. I try Howarth, guys, if you watch any Arrow videos, he does a lot of commentaries, especially for Jallo stuff. Yeah. Uh, he, he did a really good. Uh, and the, yeah, uh, B Movie Archives, the Mummy's Revenge one is Scorpion releasing. Uh, so you can, uh, Ronin Flicks, if you're in Canada, it's really expensive. So and ready, I wouldn't recommend getting it from there. Uh, but uh, I'd, my dad, you found it on, on eBay, didn't you? Lucky enough to find it on eBay. For, for a really good price because he, um, my dad is like, is a huge Nashi fan. And uh, he wanted this movie, but he wasn't going to pay like 50 bucks for it. Like, you know, he likes it not that much, guys. Uh, and that's the way it was in Ronin Flicks. Horror Rises from the Tomb. Fantastic. I got that. Uh, but so he ordered, he found it on, on eBay for an amazing price. So uh, definitely, definitely check out, you know. Hey, Andy, welcome, dude. Um, so what I thought I'd do tonight, and which would be a little bit of fun, is that I have movies that I've picked out of my dad's collection, some cool stuff to show you guys. Hey, Mug, welcome, dude. Uh, and I'm going to get his reaction to them. I'm, I'm, I'll give my reaction to these films. I will get your reaction to these films. So just something a bit different, and we'll see how it steers the conversation because I never know how the conversation is going to go. But we got some great people in here tonight, and uh, I know that uh, we got some talkative people in here tonight, so let's, let, let's keep that going. I like that. Uh, more questions, more comments, more video. Hey, 30 Wolf Man. Yeah, I'm still hanging with my pops here. Um, he, uh, I'm here till tomorrow. So we're uh, we're just chilling. This is our uh, our collaboration video. <laughs> Scorpion leasing does put out some good stuff in B movie archives. Like we, I am a I'm a bigger fan of Scorpion than Code Red. Uh, like they're you know they're brothers obviously. Got an order for Lady Street Fighter. Ah uh, yes, Lady Street Fighter. Have you got Lady Street Fighter? I think I've got there somewhere. Not that version. You got to get the AGF version. You do. I mean it. I bought it at Bayview uh, Bayview Video. Uh, Good guy on here, PMAC Movies. Uh, you got, I'm sure you guys watch PMAC. Uh, hey, Logan, how's it going, dude? Uh, he's actually going to Ontario, so I told him to check out, like, uh, Bay Bayview. Logan, are you picking up Beast with the Magic Sword? Mon Macabre. Nashi. Documentary on all his werewolf movies. That, that's incredible. That, that is awesome. I, I cannot wait to get that one. Hey, Andrew, man, it's been a long time. Um, down under, right? Who all got Vice Squad? I don't have Vice Squad yet today. Did anybody here get Vice Squad? I, I love Vice Squad. It's a cool one. Uh, Beast and the Magic, Magic Sword, uh, Logan, is one that Paul Nashi did in Japan. Um, and it's one of, uh, it's, it's definitely cool and, uh, and cheesy and fun. Does my dad like Halloween? Andrew Bellina is probably the biggest Halloween fan in the world. I'm not even joking. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's got all the stuff, masks, stuff like that. Are you a Halloween fan? Oh, of course. Favorite is Nashi's Return of the Wolfman. Get that tomorrow. I, I, I got to get Vice Squad down the road. I love like Wings Hauser. So. I sat in theater Vice Squad. It's really good. Really good. Black Magic Rights coming soon. Oh. Isn't that Redemption? But Black Magic Rights is Redemption. What's your favorite Halloween film before I go on to do this like little game here? Well, I guess like everybody else, the first one because. Okay, no, barring the first one. It. Barring the first one. I like the fourth for some reason. The fourth. With uh, Dwight, Dwight Little, right? I directed so. it, yeah. I, I don't know that Because that's the same guy that directed Laser Mission with Brandon Lee. Yeah. No, I think it's the one I did. Right. Other than the first, the fourth, for me anyway. But everybody got their own favorite. So you guys ready for this? I got some right. stuff. Got Halloween it. 3 All Day Logan. For me, oh. by the way, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I love... 
I don't consider Halloween three Halloween. It is. It's still Halloween. That's why. Well, that's the. Well, that is the way that Carpenter wanted it. I mean, like, let's be honest. After, like, four is good because it goes back to, four does a great job, but it's it's kind of like how we wanted it. He wanted an anthology series. Like, l let's be honest. If Halloween three had worked and people, and it was promoted right, like In the Myth of Madness, like some of all those some of those other movies would have been Halloween films. I can't believe you don't like In the Myth of Madness. He doesn't like In the Myth of Madness, which I think is amazing, by the way. Anyone released in eighty one? Eighty one is one of, is one of the great years of uh, of horror. It it definitely is. Like if I looked up eighty one, you you would see there's so many good movies coming out in nineteen eighty one. You guys ready for this? I'm gonna bring up stuff. We'll see how this goes, and I'm gonna show it, show it to you guys. I'm gonna show it to him. I'm gonna get his reaction. I'm gonna get your reaction. My reaction is mine. And and the yours, yeah. But that's that's what I want to know. So first off is a eighty eight films, Italian one. And uh, it is by Fernando Del Leo, so quality director. And it is the Cold Blooded Beast. Cold Blooded Beast. How's this one? Well, that's great. It's under. Uh, what's the what's their real name for that one? Sodder Motel or Hotel? Sodder Hotel, yeah. So. Well, part four as and five kind of, kind of continued back to back. Uh, they have the. Like, part four is the one where we, we meet. Uh, Daniel Harris's character, and we have this really cool character by the name of Rachel. And part five, they messed that up, and they kill Rachel. Spoiler alert! Oh, nice, thanks. So, I lo I love this cover, by the way. This is really nice. Uh, features on here, yeah, full uncensored version. Uh, oh, I know why you got the Rosabel Nero, right? Rosabel Nero. Yeah. Dad is a huge fan of. It. Pronounce her name because I'll, I'll get it wrong. Rosalba Nero. Roselle Bonieri. So my dad is a huge fan of Roselle Bonieri. And good old Kinski is in there. K Kinski. Well, I love Kinski. Please kill Mr. Kinski. I remember. I love that thing. Yep, that is 71, the year I was born, actually, so you know how old I am now, guys. Uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely a cool one to check out. And uh, I don't remember this one. I know I've seen it, but I haven't well, seen it for a long time. A typical guy in a mask going in, killing these girls. That's a, that's a typical whodunit. 80 Films does do some great releases. They do do some yeah. really amazing releases. Uh, now, is this more gel or slasher? What would you put in there? Combination? It's a combination because it is a slasher. So it's kind of like curtains. Like it kind of like yeah. threads that it's needle between. Too, so. yeah. All right. So I thought this would be a pretty easy one. <laughs> so here we <laughs> Monster Squad. Oh, so Monster Squad. Different movie altogether. Monster Club. So this... Of course, is this is Pete Walker, right? No, I don't no. Oh, oh, Rod Ward Baker. Ooh, we're attacking the Hammer territory. What is Pete Walker that he did a com comedic one? So this one here. It's it's not for everyone. It's, it's, it's Desiree Nez Jr. I think. Or am I getting no, I'm getting wrong again? I'm I am totally mixing up this movie. I don't remember this one at all. You're talking about House of Long Shadows. I am talking about House of Long Shadows, which you also have. Yeah. So there you go. We also learned about House of Long Shadows and. At once a night, I, I, I got to mess something up. I, I do. Um, well, this looks really good. Some, there's some nice features on here. This is a Scorpion releasing, by the way. It's uh, three different stories, I believe. It is. 13 Wolfman. Thank you. And, whoa, there's like some writing on the inside. You don't see this a lot. Um, now, back in the VHS days, uh, Back in the VHS days, you would get like the the Anchor Bay, yeah. and uh, they'd have these clamshell cases, and you would like take out the uh, you take out, you know take out the cover, and you could read on the back of the cases. You could read like there'd be a whole lot of writing. Um, I think even like they even did it for like the Three's Company releases when they put them out. Like they took stuff from a book like written on Three's Company, and they did like a like thing on the inside. I miss any comments here, his, especially his wraparound. So this one is one of these anthology films that I have not seen in a long time, actually. Uh, fun film. I'm a bit more on the comedic side, though. Oh, it is, yeah. But it's probably one you could watch. I don't think there's anything like that you could watch with, like, no, with a little, it, with a younger a kid. Yeah, <laughs> you did. You're one of the younger ones here. So I'm, 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 I'm super old to you, just, just so you know. Uh, well, you know. Uh, <laughs> Okay, I had to pick this one because this is a favorite of mine. Uh, not a favorite of everybody's. I'm guessing you like this one. And Blue Underground's The Prowler. Another one you saw in the theater. Nice. 
Um, this is this is eighty one, I think, isn't it? It's in the eighties. It's definitely in the eighties. Watch me get wrong again tonight. I, I this is my night to get things wrong. Eighty one, eighty two, somewhere around there. Eighty one. Yeah. Ha -ha. I am thirty seven in September. Nice. My better half. Her birthday's in September as well. So. Eighty one, actually. So I got this on my thirteenth. <laughs> <laughs> I take my wins when I can. I do. Uh, the Prowler is a really good movie. Uh, this is Slasher. One of the first Slashers, really. Uh, Savini uh, yeah, does the effects. Amazing effects in this. Um, definitely, definitely one to uh, one to check out. Uh, B Movie Archives got this in this in this top ten. Some people find it's a little slow nowadays, but I don't actually. Well, I think I it's really good. Like so Stuart Whitman yeah, is in. This is not my night for names, guys. This is not my night for names. What is Stuart Whitman in? Didn't he do one? He might have done a few. I got him in some, but he was in the last movie you mentioned, the Monster Club. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, you know, when you're psychic, but in reverse, that's me tonight. Uh, so <laughs> Farley Granger, Vicky Dawson's in this one. Uh, she's cute. Uh, Sydney Weintraub. Great little film. If you've never seen this one, great movie. Love the ending of this one. Great special effects, uh, especially there's a shotgun blast in this one um, that I uh, that I that you got to see, uh, and it's like definitely on par with the shotgun blast in Maniac, uh, with uh, just incredible stuff. Oh, you haven't seen the Prowler? Ooh, you got to watch the Prowler. It's so good. See that. I expect this one. I truly do. I don't have this one, by the way. You Only don't? got a. I got a DVD. I got a DVD. No, no, no Blu-ray. There's a reason. Uh, I could have got the Blu-ray about, about a month or so ago. Uh, hey, JR. Uh, but this is Blue Underground, and in the last, I've noticed that in the last few months, everything Blue Underground ever put out, slowly, slowly getting re-released with those big, you know, three-disc lenticular cover editions. So I bypassed on getting the Blu-ray of this one and, you know, threw the dice and gambled that this is going to have some, like, lenticular cover. So, and I will legitimately be able to look at my better half and say, you know, I don't really have that one. <laughs> so, so I'll be able to do that. <laughs> See, he loves the fact that you rolled your eyes when I said I only have it on DVD. All right, now this one my dad has to talk about because I do not remember this film, but I know I've seen it. Uh, and that is one that he actually mentioned a lot tonight. You ready for a Code Red, guys? Does you, do you have a favorite horror movie actor? Oh, God. Oh. I go way back, you know. I go way back to Carla and Cheney and all of them. But, and Lee, I mean, there's so many. Hard. If so, if you had to pick, like, a top five, like, well, I'm, I'm guessing Christopher Lee, Christopher Christopher Lee is going to be there. Peter the Peter. older stuff, but like Carla and Cheney. You mean Nashi wouldn't wouldn't make your top five? Nashi is different. Uh, he's in classic zone to me, so I like Nashi. Guess he. That's my dad's. What's your, what's your dad's horror film? He's got a lot. Uh, I know that like there's a few. Know. There's a few. Yeah, like and the ones that that he likes. Uh, I know Night of the Hunter. That's one of your that's one of your well, faves. It's not really horror. Yeah, I still it is horror. No. Well, you would call it horror. Thriller or horror? Night of the Hunter. You think thriller, right? Thriller. Yeah. Favorite horror movie. When did my father start collecting videos? Way before I did. A uh, few years back. <laughs> Mother used to take me and my sister to the drive-in. That's where you saw most of your horror movies. Your mother's cool, dude. I saw a lot of drive-in, so, too. Are you teaming up on me, 30 with Man? Is that what you're doing? He said Thriller, too. Uh, I don't know. It creeped me out. It really did. It freaked me it out. It was a great movie. It just wasn't horror. It was a great movie. Trapped. So, this is the one you got to talk about. This is the one you know. No, that's not horror. Oh, no, this is definitely not horror. But this is the one you've been talking about. Tonight. This is the one he's been looking for. He's like, I got this movie. It's trapped. It's really good. Uh, it's, you know, it's a Code Red release. It's cheesy fun. That's not what it is. Henry Silva, Nicholas Campbell. I like Nicholas Campbell. Barbara Gordon. Who did this one? We even threw it. So, this is one of the Katrina ones, right? So, this is, I guess, nor this is kind of one of the ones that... Uh, that Scorpion gave to Code Red uh, because uh, this girl here. So I'm a, I'm a wrestling fan, so anybody that, that likes wrestling knows this. So this girl here is, uh, is Katrina. 
Uh, she is a uh, she was a wrestler, and she uh, played a vampire character in uh, in TNA as well. I call it as under the name Winter. So she is like kind of their uh, she's kind of their Avira. She's like the host, and she does like uh, interviews and stuff like that on a lot of the Scorpion releasing stuff. There's uh, there's a bunch of different ones that she uh, that she does. I got I got a few with her on there. So you can usually tell it's uh, kind of a Scorpion one when you see her uh, when you see her there. On the back of the box so code red given from Scorpio so uh, there we go so this is one that my dad was extremely excited about do I still watch wrestling I love it AW uh, you interviewed Katrina was she nice 13th of man was she nice see because me and my better half were huge fans of her uh, we watched TNA back then it was really good uh, and uh, she came over and we uh, we thought she, she was a breath of fresh air. See, Thirdly Wolfman has interviewed a lot of the Scream Queens. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm super jealous about that. And I keep telling Thirdly Wolfman when it's a Scream Queen that you know I've talked about that I like, name drop me. Do that. Uh, so this is one that my dad actually has talked about a ton. And he says if this is one that everybody needs to own. It's an umbrella release. This isn't horror. But it's uh, it's really cool and it's got a lot of features. Remember this one? A lot of features. So this is the man from Hong Kong. So is this Brian Trenchard Smith? Did he? Do? Yes. Yep. So I got that one right. Uh, she's us. Oh, Paul Butcher's sister. Was that was that when, they, when Paul Butcher was a pirate? What did they do that? Uh, so man from Hong Kong. I know Andrew's got this one because he can get these first. Andrew's actually in Australia, okay. where Umbrella is from. Um, and this, there are a ton of features. So aside from having a new 4K remaster, audio commentary, I got to go through this. Making of the movie, newsreel footage, uh, stuff from un Not Quite Hollywood, which is one of the greatest documentaries of all time um, uh, on exploitation. Uh, trailers from Hell with Brian Trenchard Smith. But this is where it gets really cool. You want to see like real cool features, like really good stuff? Uh, exactly. Five extra movies. We got Death Cheaters. Uh, with an audio commentary, by the way, we have Stunt Rock again with an audio commentary. Uh, Kung Fu Killers, Danger Freaks, and The Stuntman. So there are five feature films on here. Not like shorts or not like oh, like mini films or anything. Like, no, five feature films on here. Two of the of the of the extra films have their own commentaries. So that's all together. That's six films, a bunch of features. You're getting like one, two, like at least three commentaries. And a ton of stuff. So if you don't have the man from Hong Kong, I don't yet, but I do need to get this one. Um, the stunt man is a cool movie. Oh man, I I, I need this one. That's really good. Really cool. Definitely check it out. If you don't have a 13th Wolf Man, if you don't have a Logan, guys, you gotta get this one. Andrew's right. It is awesome. My dad like vouched. This is this this is dad approved. This is the this is the Diamond Dad collection. Hey Charles. Uh, he loved the theme song. Do you like these? Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Since this, since Nashi's announcement was today, uh, I got a couple. Of, I've only got a couple of Cinematheque uh, umbrella releases. I have Fair Game. I think you got that one too, right? Yeah, that's a which, too, isn't it? which is a uh, which is a, yeah, that's a, a really really cool one. And uh, my dad has a really cool collection. Um, and uh, what else was it? I got Body Double. And uh, there's another one too. I don't have a lot. Nashi. Oh, well, yeah. Well, the uh, Third Wolf Man. They announced the features for the uh, for the Beast and the Magic Sword. Has your dad ever seen Turkey Shoot and Dead End Drive? It. I'm sure you have. Turkey oh, Shoot. Oh yes, yeah. Yeah. Over here, Turkey Shoot was called Escape 2000. Uh, we only got it as Turkey Shoot later on uh, when Severn Films put it out. But originally, when it was put out by Anchor Bay. Uh, it was under. It came under the title Escape 2000. It was like really shiny cover. I've actually got that old DVD. I got to upgrade that one. And of course, Dead and Driving. But yeah, yeah. Uh, that's one that you kind of like come across. A, would come across a lot. I think Star Maker. So I'm putting that on a VHS. I don't know what it is exactly. I know I had it. Well, uh, Arrow you know, on, on Blu-ray, but like in the old days, I think it was Star Maker yeah, because they put it yeah. one. All right. So this is uh, this is out of print, right? This is like this is a rare one. Yeah. yeah, I got. I gave this this one to my dad. I think it was. I was moving away at the time, and this was one of the, one of the things that that I gave my dad, and he, I'm glad you kept it. <laughs> so it's a it's a nasty double feature, 
and somebody mentioned one of the titles here actually earlier on if they're still here or not i'm not sure but it is night of the zombie and vengeance sorry night of the werewolf huh? i'll get this right one of these days <laughs> vengeance of zombie of the zombies and this is from uh, this is bci yeah so they're at a you know this is definitely a out uh out of print now uh there is some stuff on here too actually these are both uncut versions introductions by Panashi, deleted scenes um steel gallery um alternate clothed version uh, so with in the nashi ones uh, i've seen a lot of those like kind of like spanish ones they do yeah. there'd be the nude version new world thank you thank you and ready right it's it was new world um i remember the, i remember the case too actually yeah they do clothed versions because you know just in case somebody didn't want the nudity maybe maybe if somebody said you know i really want to watch night of the werewolves but i want to watch watch it on pure flicks then maybe we can see it like that then we'll go with that okay i had to put this one in just because it's cool this is actually a mill creek release it blows my mind that mill creek put it out like this and uh i i you know i love kaiju films so do you uh, i probably love kaiju films because of uh because of my dad and this is the steelbook release of mothra i love this i think this is one sexy beast i gotta pick this up this is only like twenty dollars the people's version <laughs> and you, you take it off and you got this like kind of cool like slip cover so you get to see i, I had to show you guys this because i know most of you guys have this but still if, if you don't this it's a sexy beast it really is you swear about this one? Oh yeah great yes, great print too right, right oh it is amazing quality. mill creek has really been knocked out of the park with some of the stuff all they gotta do is put some more features on there uh with, with their stuff they got features on this one but i think there's two versions of the film yeah, on this japanese one. and american version, yeah. yeah so we get japanese and u.s versions and we get an auto commentary uh so really good and ah asian movie i knew you like this one see you just gotta wait you find something and you picked up this one uh during where do you find Ma Mothra? You can find that one. I'm pretty much yeah, sure on Amazon. I got on Amazon, yes. And uh, for really cheap, Kathy, actually. I think it's around like $20 or under right now. So uh, just give it a shot. I I'm pretty sure. Uh, don't, don't quote me on it. But uh, watch the video first and then check. We'll, we'll go with that. Uh, now, this one you got. This I have the original edition of this one before they put it like a steelbook. Um, this is a gorgeous steelbook, though. It really oh, is. Okay. Um, and this is Humanized from the Deep. Now... I have the uh, the Blu-ray of this. I think it was a, a Roger Corman collection because be, yeah. that Shout Factory put it, put it out under originally. So this is the the Steelbook edition of this one here. A Mill Creek one of the worst. Day. Mill Creek used to be one of those where they were iffy, and you would like get like kind of like you were not sure. You'd roll your dice on the quality. Uh, back in the day, they'd have like these fifty packs and hundred packs, but they'd have movies that that nobody else had. Like no, but now, a Mill Creek, is uh, is doing really, really cool stuff, and uh, their 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 quality has gone up like a, a lot. Oh yeah. So do you like Kaiju? You're asked. I said, oh, of course, yes. Yeah, he's a huge Kaiju fan. Mill Creek is definitely up their game. Thirty Wolfman got some Mill Creek today. Uh, he got he got some he, he got the complete heart to heart. I'm jealous of that. I like that show. And there's the back of the. Humanized from the Deep. I really like this one. There's, it's a clever film, and one of the neat things, and this is not giving away too much, but the creatures actually, they do a kind of a, I always find this really clever. Uh, Humanized is awesome. Uh, where they actually come on first, and they don't attack people, and they don't, you know, people don't see them, but they come onto land, and, and they kill all the dogs. They kill all the dogs, because basically, you know, dogs protect. You know, just the TV movies. Hmm. <laughs> still, still, that's good. All right, so this is one, just not crazy. Well, there's a regular edition, Kathy, if you don't want to get the Steelbook edition. So that's the Sexy Shine edition. I got the regular edition. You're good either way. Uh, but the Steelbook edition might actually be cheaper than the regular edition right now. Could be. Um, all right, so this is a favorite of mine. Uh, I actually really love this movie. I, I love the girl that's in this movie, actually. She's, she's amazing. Um, and this is Thriller, A Cruel Picture. So this is a revenge film. You're a fan of this one, I'm assuming. Oh, you got it. You own it's it. good. It's not for everybody. I'll be honest with you. No. Yeah. Well, it's you know, it's it's a it's a darker one. Now, this is the the uncut version, right? 
Yeah, yeah. so they, they had to know that our, there are, are, of course, scenes in the uncut version. Oh, wow, really? Uh, okay, I don't remember that. So maybe I, I haven't seen like the uncut uncut version. Uh, Christina Lindbergh, I think, is right. I got some yeah. right. Is in this one, and I'm pretty sure uh, she's the same girl like when she was young, younger. Well, one of her sex, but it, like made in Sweden and stuff like that. She did that as well. Um, and she did like didn't she do like a, a kung fu one, like some kind of like a nude kung fu? Have you seen Sushi Girl? No. Sushi Girl. I don't think I have. Oh, I'm not sure. I don't think I have either. No. Maybe I need to see, Do I need to see Sushi Girl? Is it good one, Kathy? Uh, and yeah, the company that you're thinking about that's really crappy, by the way, uh, is, uh, is Echo Bridge. They put out some pretty crappy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like oh, Andrew, thank you for coming in, dude. Uh, I know it's a different time frame over there in, uh, in, in Australia. If you haven't checked out any of Andrew's stuff, Andrew's awesome. And he uh, does like, uh, and he's probably the world's l biggest Halloween fan. So have a great evening there. I need to see Sushi Girl. Is is, is that Lindbergh? No. Ooh. I don't know. I'm not sure. I, uh... Maybe it is. Maybe we just don't know because we haven't seen it. No. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> Thriller. This was put up by Snaps. So great one. I would love to see a Blu-ray of that one come out. He's going to look up Sushi Girl. I know he is. All right. Are you ready for a Are you ready for a weird one, an incredibly strange one? My dad asked me why Courtney Palm, Tony Todd, Mark Hamill. Okay. Um, then I would check that out. Oh, it looks cool. Oh, wait a second. I've seen the cover to this. Yeah, it looks good. I think I've seen the trailer to this. Actually, it does look cool. I haven't seen it yet, but I have seen the trailer to this one. Courtney. So. Ready for an, a something weird one? Or something weird? So this is, she came on the bus, the Sin Syndicate and Sin Magazine, a sinful triple feature. So. And I'm not going to comment. Is this, this isn't an adult, is it? No, it's not it's hardcore. Not. No. Okay. Oh, you've been in court? Dude, you've interviewed everyone. Uh, <laughs> one, 13 Wolfman, I'm not sure if, he's, if you're married or single, but if not, the dude's gonna hook himself up with them. Some, like, some scream queen, we're gonna find out. And then if you do, if you do, you realize this guy, this guy gets invited to the wedding, right? You, you know that. And if you got a better half, don't let her get mad at me. <laughs> Mark Hamill has been some hidden gems. I like Guyver too, the Guyver films that he did. Uh, Fun cheese. If he had Guyver. Want to know if your dad has seen The Vengeance of She in the theater. Did you see that one in the theater? I saw both in the theater, first and second. First one was the best. Yeah. Uh, Benjamin Jashi was... Who was in that one? Who was the girl in that one? Uh, I can't pronounce her name. <laughs> She's a Hungarian actress, but I can't pronounce her name. Uh, yeah, she, I like she. Uh, and Benjamin Jashi is a film that I like a bit. Uh, I don't remember it very well. Actually, I got it, but it's I don't remember a, that well. It's strange. The only one left over is John Richardson. He's the only guy left over from the first one. Though. Oh, how are you doing? Hanging in there. Getting there, we're... Still waiting to hear on the on the surgery thing. That that's you know, <laughs> fun cheese is my trademark. It kind of is. Uh, oh, by the way, guys, just so you know, last night I taped an episode of the Just of This podcast, and for a change, it is actually isn't a vinegar syndrome related one. It's going to be talking about a lot of of different genres, a lot of different films and different genres as well. Uh, it's something kind of new and something neat. It's a it's a new thing that he's doing. Uh, it's kind of a watch pile type of thing. Uh, so me and Brian taped that last night, and that should be going up next week. So be sure to listen. Download it for, and listen, please. So are you ready for another Nashi? Are you ready? Are you ready for a Nashi? Are you guys ready for a Nashi? Bring it on. This one's out of print. I'm jealous of this one. I don't even know if it's good, but I'm so jealous. I don't think I've seen this one. <laughs> I know. They should at least at least a t-shirt of and you know, and maybe a year-long subscription. I would like that. <laughs> Panic Beats. How is Panic Beats? It's good, it's different. Uh, don't ask me to explain it to you. It's one of those you have to watch it. It's, it is Nashy. It it is yeah, uniquely yeah, Nashy. Oh, it's got the Spanish Hordes uh, documentary on it. 
Is that one of those uh, ones that do those, those half hour ones that they do that used to come? I think so. I can't remember now. Last Very cool. Nashi, yes. You Lots of Nashi. Oh, I, I did. I, I looked for this. Uh, and it is, you know, it's, it is Mondo Macabre. This is out of print. A very hard one to find. Box. We don't know what the October box set is yet, 13th Wolfman, but we do know, we do know that they're doing a Vice Academy box set. Ginger, you know, Ginger Lynn and Linnea Quigley. Are you excited about that? You're not going to buy it, are you? Come on. You know, you might want to. Uh, <laughs> Panic Beats. Anyway, Nashi, anybody see this one? I love this cover. It is an amazing cover. So this isn't like a wear one though, right? This is different. Oh, no, no. So it's just like like an evil Nashi. Like, not that there's like a good Nashi. But, you know, like he's not, he's not usually good. Well, maybe the wear is kind of good. See? And another Nashi, because I oh. found it. Because <laughs> I found it. It is. It is hard to find. That that's hard. Is this one hard to find? I do not Maybe know. Maybe now I don't it, know. Probably. So, another Nash. You ready for another weird Nashy? I don't think he's aware from this one either. He kind of looks like Coffin Joe. He does. A, <laughs> he he, he does a, 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 an horror actor finally wins an award for his his movies. It's, it's <sighs> Linnea Quigley. It's a well acted. Uh, so this is called what? Rojo. Rojo. Sangri, Rojo Sangri. There we go. That's that's my that's my accent for tonight. That's my accent. <laughs> but it looks cool. It's a Fangoria one. Fangoria had had a label, so Fangoria International. Um, so maybe this will get re-released now that there's new Fangoria. Never heard. See, Panic Beat. I told it, Jerry. Every once in a while, I'll find something, throw you with 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 a, a swerve the curveball. Finger Sim was able to put it. Oh, the Ron the Sheer segments of USA Tonight. That would be kind of cool. They did do. Uh, if you got Ice Cream Man, they did uh, the, you got Ice Cream Man, do you got Ice Cream Man? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. You, you I should. Don't it's time. really cool. Uh, at Vinegar Syndrome, when they put it out, they put out the one with the, the TNT Monster Vision with Joe Bob Briggs, uh, like as a bonus on there. So that was actually kind of cool. But definitely, guys, look, tell me, does he not look like the Co Coffin Joe right here? Does he look like this in the movie? So he looks either like a cross between Coffin Joe and one of the, uh, one of the Jack the Rippers from the early it days. Is, uh, Jack the Ripper. Oh, it is Jack the Ripper. Sorry. It's Jack the Ripper a segment. He's in it. It's just one segment of the movie. Oh. He does, not, he does a few different characters in that movie. It kind of looks like, I can't say which Jack the Ripper he looks like because it would give away the ending of a certain film. But uh, he looks like a Jack the Ripper in a certain film. And because, not nasty, could you do the classic sometime? Oh, definitely. I would love to do the classic. I would love to do the classic when you're around because uh, that would be, I, I love the classic stuff. So, Inner Vision. Inner Vision never gets talked about. Poor guys. Isn't that, it's a shame. This isn't, don't worry, this isn't one of their just regular kind of super cheesy ones. You don't think you can marathon these films. The Werewolf ones. You can marathon the Werewolf ones. You could do that. Yeah, most of those are good. Curse the Devil is, is uh, that's, that's definitely my favorite. Fear of the Wolfman probably is next. You need to watch more. Probably. So this is The Trail of Dracula. So this is a documentary by Inner Vision. It's a documentary. It's got a lot of uh, trailers of Dracula movies too, I believe. Yeah, we have Dracula movie tra 94 minutes of Dracula movie trailers. I love this cover, by the way. This is really cool. Nice cover. See, this is the only Intervision tale that my dad would not get me because my dad's a huge Dracula freak. And he, and he knows it's not the Z-grade crappiness that, that, that I so enjoy so much. Uh, definitely, guys, it, next time Severn has a sale, check this one out. Uh, you got this one for a really good price during Severn yeah. sale, like, probably like five or less than that. <clears throat> and that is that segment. That went faster than I thought. Yeah. And and like I had a few of them there. And so Kathy says, so talk about let's let's do a little like an impromptu talk on on some of the on some of your older horror stuff. So you've got all the universal stuff, right? Which I'm really looking for. I mean, what year? How far back are they going? Let's go way back. Uh, let's go back to like when I went. Let's not when I thought back in silence, but um, <laughs> I like Fear the Wolfman. Uh, but I understand. Um, but uh, I'm a big uh, I'm a big universe fan. I grew up like watching like CBC Late Night, and every every October CBC Late Night would have on 
uh, like every night of the week, they'd have on like a horror film. And they were always universal horror. So uh, there'd be like the Dracula films, the Mummy films. Uh, they'd have the Frankenstein movies on there. Uh, if you're lucky, there'd be like some of the creature ones on there. So what does my dad think of the 50s atomic age sci-fi horror stuff? Ooh, that's a good question. There's, that's, there's a genre for oh, you. That's yeah, I, I should have quite a few of them in my collection. Uh, like, Not just any particular... Yeah, any particular one? See, my dad's a huge fan of that. I like that stuff too, but if there's gigantic spiders, I'm not so much. So tarantula? No. I, I don't Not spiders, so much? But I do own tarantula. Do you really? I own it. I yeah. own. Do you own Kingdom of Spiders? Which no. is not in that. No, no, that's I not just had to say. <clears throat> one of Price's best roles, in your opinion, was The Fly, 1958. It is a, it is a good role, and it takes yeah. advantage oh, of, his, of, of his voice. Uh, let's do that. Let's price. Okay, let's talk price for a second. Uh, Vincent Price. What are your favorite Vincent? What are some of your favorite Vincent Price films? Oh, do you have a, Do you have like a favorite? House of Wax. I like. <sighs> Lovely film. Them beginning of the end. Good ones. The Corman ones were all fun. But they threw at me a curveball, and he started talking about. Uh, are they still doing the creature? Cool Blue, they've been doing the Creature from the Black Lagoon remake for the last 30 years. Uh, there's always somebody on it. Uh, there, it's always an, an echo horror film. Uh, and, uh, and it always gets canceled. Like, the last, last person I heard was uh, Del Toro was thinking about doing it. Yeah. Father the Usher, Raven. Uh, for me, guys, I, like, you know, I grew up, like, acting was going to be my thing. Theater Blood is, is one of my favorite. Yeah, uh, but I films. like the House of Usher. I agree with him on that. Thought that House of Usher is, is a fantastic film. Is a great film. But uh, I just... It's, I like all the Corman ones. I mean, he handed it up, but that's probably should well, that's, a, that's, that's price. But the thing is that... But Theater Blood... What makes Theater Blood, like, really, really good is there's a sequence Theater Blood, which is kind of like Danerick. I love Danerick. Is Psychotic Bob Rossi. When he's the hairdresser and he's got the big wig, he looks like Bob Rossi. Trust me, guys, check out. He does, doesn't he? He looks like Bob Rossi from like those. You know, we'll, we'll just make some happy little clouds right here. Um, <laughs> Doctor Goldfoot and the, and the and the girl bombs is the worst. Is that his worst film? Pretty uh, much. It, it, it's it's pretty it is definitely up it's there. Pretty bad. <laughs> it, it, it's up there. I mean, like, I, I love a lot of, like, the Vincent Price stuff. I like the, the Fives films. I like the fact that he kind of, like, took his voice away from them and he actually had to do some different type of acting in it. Haunted Palace, you know, Tales like of Terror, Mask of the Red Death. How do you feel about Mask of the Red Death? I like that it took a while, but it's one of his better ones. It is. Uh, how do you feel about Tim Legia? It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, I can agree. Um, Which Finder General? Which exactly? There you go. Great minds think alike. Which finder general? Uh, I, I enjoy. Played against, you know, he, he was really evil he, in that, really bad in that. Oh, he was yeah. extremely vicious. It's like a different type of role for, uh, for well, yeah. yeah, for Vincent Price. Uh, Kathy likes the Gulf, Doctor Goldfoot movies, and I, I think they're fun. I, I, I think, think she just likes the young actors like Frank Avon and Fabian. <laughs> that's why she likes that. Last Man on Earth. Actually, it's not a bad movie. You get the right version. That was not a bad movie. I like that film. Uh, the, as you guys know, I do have that Arrow Vincent Price set, and it is one of the prizes in my collection. I've, you've seen that. It's got like comics and everything in it. Cronenberg's remake was. You thought Cronenberg's remake was better than The Fly? Hmm. It's really good. I'm not going to lie to you. I like them both. Um, now, uh, which one had David Hedison? That's the old one. The old one, the original Fly, right? Recently. So. Yeah, I was a, I'm a huge David Hedison fan. Uh, I watched him in like a lot of movies growing up. Like, uh, like he's passed on this year, actually. Uh, I saw him in, in soap operas that he did later on, and of course in the James Bond films. He was the only guy to uh, at the time to uh, play a Felix Leiter twice. Uh, he played him in the early films, and he played him again in the Timothy Dalton film. Um, License to Kill, actually. It was the uh, last time that he played Leiter. Because Priscilla Burns is his wife. The original flower for you. I, I don't know. I mean, there's so much good stuff. But you know what? One of the let us talk about the unheralded, really, really good, like Vincent Price performance. And it's only really short. It's only small. Abner Costello meet Frankenstein. There, I love the ending. Uh, at the ending of Abner Costello meet Frankenstein, they get in, in this rowboat, and uh, you know, pretty much this is you know this is them kind of getting away. 
And this is when Price does like a, kind of a, a sort of a cameo, a, kind of an auditory cameo as the Invisible Man. So we've seen all these monsters, we've seen Dracula, we've seen Frankenstein, you know, we got the Wolfman. And uh, the Invisible Man's not, you know, he hasn't been there. But they kind of have that little last joke and it's really cool. And it's probably one of my favorite African Silver films. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I had to put that in there. I, I just really like that. And it's a different Price one. But he did do Return of the Invisible Man. So he, he did, yeah. So it was kind of a comeback. Yeah. Out to our cameo set. But it was, it's, you know, fantastic. That Price-wise, you know, you can pretty much almost watch anything. Baron of Arizona, there you go. Uh, about, uh, I know, Kathy, I am so stoked. I don't, I don't have. Oh, Price was, a, yes, Vincent Price was an artist. He actually worked with, uh, he worked with Sears, actually, I think, wasn't it? He was an artist. He wrote yeah. cookbooks. He wrote cookbooks. Uh, yeah, he, he was a, he was a Renaissance man, really. He, he did it all, but he actually had a uh, a line of art work with Sears uh, back in the day. Uh, there's a, there was a documentary on. It was probably on my on my actually fly side. I think you got it too. He bought it for Sears exactly. There were five Invisible Man movies and spin-offs. and uh, the last one they started it like horror and they ended up like doing like comedy and like action yeah, stuff something. like Invisible Agent I think Invisible Woman was one of them something like that yeah I got, I got them here somewhere but uh, they're, they're fun like they're really fun yeah, films fun. Uh, but uh, I think if out of all the franchises of all like the re original Universal franchises which one do you think got better? like we all know that some started as classic. I, ha I have an answer for this, like, uh, like in, my, in my mind, what I think anyway. Well, you don't know because the Frankenstein was great. Brian Frankenstein was better. Yeah. The son was in between, and then it kept on going. So it didn't get really better. The mummies were fun. They were pretty much all like, they were fun. That's my answer. Because the mummy didn't all get better, but they were just... I, I, th I think the, I, I, see, the Boris Karloff mummies is, is okay, but I do think that they were more fun, that the other ones oh, were, fun, were, yes, were definitely fun. more fun. Uh, and as for like Fra Frankenstein, when you think of like when people say, you know, when anybody comes to you and says like sequels, you know, oh, well, you know, uh, I don't like sequels. You know, sequels are never better than the original. Bride of Frankenstein. Just tell them Bride of Frankenstein. That, Th that is definitely better than the original. Uh, and, and, the, and the first Frankenstein is good too. Uh, but uh, the creature films, they were pretty much the same film over and over again, actually. Uh, I enjoyed all three of them. Oh, I love the creature. Um, it's, it's, it was just a great design. Um, as far as like the Dracula film, somebody there said the Dracula film thought, thought they got better uh, as he went through, and I would probably agree with that actually because the first Dracula yeah, film is it's, it's it, we should watch it again. Um, I'm, and I'm it's kind of slow moving. Yeah, it is. It's a bit dry. Uh, like you know, I love Bela Lugosi. He's a great. He does a great job as Dracula, uh, but uh, it is you know, <laughs> I still remember the ending. You know, it's like Dracula is dead. Like that's it. That that's the ending. Yeah, it's so anticlimactic. But you know, it's back. It's early. It's an early one. Uh, I loved uh, Daughter Dracula, Dracula's daughter, because uh, basically, it's Actually, it's one very of the very. Ones, the son of Dracula. Son of Dracula went, went went so far ahead. Son of Dracula had Lon Chaney, and he and they had like like kind of the uh, kind of the cool like the um, the, the animated from like transition. Uh, I love Son of Dracula, and it's done in New Orleans, so it's done it's done really different uh, as well. It's actually one of my favorites. I remember being a kid and like we're and watching, like like a lot of these, right? And uh, and we get to, and I got the Son of Dracula and it was so different. It was such like a breath of fresh air. Uh, it was your favorite? Me too. See, thirteen weapon again. Great minds think alike. Um, because it was different. I mean, it wasn't as dry as Dracula. It wasn't pseudo sexual like uh, like Dracula's daughter is. Uh, it was it was just really fun. And they actually had. I think it's one of the first ones where you really notice special effects yeah. in the film. And it's a dark film. Like people can't alley card exactly. Uh, and the uh, the it, it's a you know good people die in. in when I watched Sun the Dracula. most out of the, the Dracula ones, I keep them back. There. I can't remember because what comes after Sun Dracula? Which one is that again? Well, then you went to. Uh, is that Dracula? Right? You went to the house of Dracula, or it was a Frankenstein. <sighs> oh yeah. Then the house of Dracula. <laughs> they're they're okay. They're fine. That that takes a holiday, huh? Ah. I, uh, and then of course the last one, the death nail is that next to me, Frankenstein. I guess that's the death yeah, nail of it all. So, yeah. One, they usually say, once a uh, once once a genre, once a film series. 
uh, a serious film series, hit, hits comedy, hits like that comedy spoof satire thing. It's it's the death knell of that of that of that series or genre for a while, like even if it's a good film, and uh, I think that's that's pretty much been you know pretty accurate, uh, except when it comes to slasher films because their their satire one was an early one which was uh, Student Bodies I, th I think it was like eighty one or eighty two, and there was a lot of good slashers came after that, uh, Find the Visible Man nineteen thirty three to be quite dull, so what do you think what's your thoughts on that do you like the Visible Man. I like it, but I agree. It's a, I agree with that. But the other ones were a little bit more fun, but uh, it wasn't for us. So. I I like it. I I will be honest with you. I think Claude Rains is, is a good actor, but he can be a stiff actor at at times. He's Claude Rains is a theater actor, and and it really really shows. I mean, like. Uh, He's got a great voice. He's got an amazing well, that's voice. That's what he needed. So. They needed well for that type of role. My God, yes, and uh, and he did it. Like when 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 it came time to deliver, uh, Cloud Rains delivers, um, definitely. Uh, and of course, we get him again as in, in the Wolfman, which we'll, which we'll talk about in a minute. Actually, um, somebody, uh, third Wolfman here, speaking of Wolfman, said that he liked he loves Bella, but thought John Carradine was awesome as Dracula. I, I do actually really like the hamminess of John Carradine in these films. I, I like John Carradine for a lot of reasons, uh, and I'll forgive his later movies. <laughs> well, when you really think about it, there's... He, he was a good actor, Shakespearean actor, and he, but whether he was the best Dracula, I don't know, but he he was fun. Cloud Rains has been some of the best films of all time. Thank you, Casablanca. Oh, Blanca. God, yes, yes. Uh, don't worry, I wasn't, I wasn't dissing Cloud Rains. I Cloud prefer Rains. theater acting, so that was, that was a compliment. Uh, Cloud Rains, uh, great actor. Uh, but, uh, yeah... Uh, But yeah, I, John Carradine uh, actually got to play Dracula over the years. He played Dracula back in like in House of Dracula. He played Dracula in like Vampire Workers. Uh, you know, he, don't he, Billy the Kid versus Dracula. Billy Kid, yeah, the, you guys got to pick that one up, guys. Billy the Kid versus Dracula. This is out on Blu-ray now. Is it? A, is it Kino? Kino, so Kino, is it Kino? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kat says she's older than most of us, so she grew up when movies were unforgettable and so are the, were the actors. My dad was talking to me that the other day, actually, okay. uh, that the actors are not the same as they are oh my back gosh, in the day. Man. Like, there was, there was a presence. There was, like, there was just this aura and a mystique to, uh, to the actors. Uh, you, know, you know, if you want to get, like, you know, jaded about it, you can say, well, you know, the studio helped create that type of thing. But, no, a lot of these guys, they, they really, like, the Humphrey Bogarts of, of the day, and even like some of the smaller actors, like uh, like like jo the George Rafts and people like that, actually were incredibly well. Dwight Fry, I think, is really underrated and not talked about enough when it comes to like character acting. Uh, incredible. Old Dark House is a real favorite of of yours. Uh, uh, you you like Old Dark House? I which one? one yes. uh, which one though? Uh, it must be the Carlisle one. Probably. I would have to say the Carlisle. It's got to be the Carlisle one. Son of Vince Price. See, you've taught your son well. Uh, Mr. Smith goes to Washington, Notorious Castellanca. That's some of your favorites. See, I watched a video recently uh, where Logan did a, uh, a Criterion uh, thing. Cri Lo Lo Logan's Criterion song is awesome. You know it. Uh, but um, he did a cri And I think both of those movies, didn't he both? Because you, know, you got Notorious and you got... And... It, and another one. They both had Cloud Rains, didn't they? They both had Cloud Rains. I think they both had Cloud Rains. I remember you getting Notorious because it came out during the Criterion Show. Casablanca also. Cloud Rains. Both of them. I have to check to see what I missed there. Adventures of Robin Hood, oh, yeah? I have that one. I got a lot of Cloud Rains when I think about it. <laughs> 30 Wood Men said that after the 70s, he thinks a lot of them. The movie star, like actual movie stars, kind of went the way of the dodo, kind of like just wasn't anymore. Can you think? Who was a good like movie star that came from the eighties? That kept that mystique. From the eighties. From the eighties. From the eighties. Because I don't know. Well, I think I slipped through the eighties. <laughs> Family Opera, another great one. Uh, and again, Claude Rains. Yeah. So yeah, Claude Rains, um, and again. I, like I say, Claude Rain's strength, and I will, I will swear by this, Claude Rain's strength is in the fact that, that he did theater 
and he and, and he did it well. He was a very theatrical actor. Uh, people say Leonardo DiCaprio is the last true movie star. Hmm. He's a good actor. Uh, I, I, wouldn't, I cannot deny that Leonardo DiCaprio is, is not a good actor and is able to do different things. Uh, from you know, from like the Wolf of Wall Street, uh, Django. I did a Django film. Uh, oh, you know, there was what? What's that one? Uh, I think that Melissa like what's eating Gilbert Grape, right? That's, that's an early one because Johnny yeah. Depp was in that one. Yeah. My 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 uh, one of my sister my sister Melissa she's actually a huge huge fan of uh, of uh, of Johnny Depp. So uh, don't care for DiCaprio. Uh, what about what about like Canadian actors though? Like some great Canadian actors. There are some. There are great Canadian actors. Yes, there are. Um, you not see Bonanza, uh, <clears throat> or uh, or of course seeing things. Louis Coney. Louis de Grandi. Come on, his head exploded in scanners. That's a pretty big thing. Everybody talking, remembers the scan, the exploding head in scanners. Good Canadian actors, I thought. He's a good Canadian actor. He, oh. And a writer too. Glenn he wrote, Ford is a good Canadian. actor. He's a great Canadian actor. Raymond that, Burr is a good Canadian actor. <laughs> there's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of them. But they're not from the Hey, East, William though. Shatner, don't forget. Michael, Michael Ironside. Ironside. Yes, Michael I will Ironside. definitely agree with Michael Ironside. He's an amazing Canadian actor. Yeah. I was trying to pick a guy from the 80s, though. Uh, oh. <clears throat> uh, but, but, yeah. Um, Lance Hendrickson. Uh, Shatner, Nimoy. Yeah. But Nimoy, it's not like he's not Canadian, is it? Yes, he is. I don't think so. Not Nimoy. He's he not? might be. I don't know. Maybe. Is, really is Nimoy Canadian? I should know this. I'm a Star Trek fan. Uh, Shatner's, for sure. I know that. Yeah. And uh, there are a lot of great Canadian actors. Yeah. We also, by the way, wrestlers, we gave you most of your good wrestlers as well. But we did. We really did. We And hockey players. So, yeah, we were good. I'm not good with the sports. Canada overall, kind of good sports. They were good sports. Wayne Gretzky. You're not a fan. I know. I like Wayne Gretzky. All right. Uh, we kind of went off subject for a second. Um, I'm trying to think Canadian actors, though. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the Voice. The Voice. Uh, it, it's killing me. Uh, yeah, Hussars of Bonanza. Lauren Green. Lauren, thank you. Lauren Green is the voice. Bella Lugosi meets the Brooklyn Gorillas, the hidden gem. Uh, that, that, is, that would definitely be one of yours. Yeah, I got it. Is that one of those Barry Boy type films? It is uh, East Side Kids. Or East Side Kids. Um, I got a lot of their stuff. My dad is a no. huge fan of like the East Side Kids, Dead End Kids, Barry Boy stuff. Uh, Christopher Plummer, yes, fantastic actor. And again, yeah. another oh, theater of actor. Boys, uh, Murder by Decree is one of my favorites. Fantastic, fantastic film. Murder by Decree is a great film. It is by Bob Clark, who made my favorite film of all time, Black Christmas. Some you never know, look, Ryan Gosling. Oh, I know he was a... Mike Myers, he was a really good... Oh, yeah, baby, yeah. Jim Carrey. Leo Gorsi, hey. Yeah, Leo Gorsi, I'm not Sal. Sean Johnson said, Len Crew, great Canadian actor. Oh, I know who he is, yeah. yeah. I know who he is. Michael J. Fox. Or your favorite, Hayden Christensen yeah. from Star Wars. Uh, uh, Dan uh, Aykroyd is Canadian. Uh, yeah, of course. Donald course. Sutherland, which is one of the best. Oh, yes. I love Donald Sutherland. You've got to mention him. And Kiefer Sutherland, too. Yeah. Kiefer Sutherland. I, Born up your way. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Kiefer Sutherland. Of course, Lost Boys is one of my favorites. Some I didn't know Will Arnett. I didn't know he's Canadian. He's Canadian. Actually, I don't know. And he's, he's a good Batman. Did Keanu you watch Reeves. Keanu Reeves, I knew was... Leslie Nielsen, come on now. One of the greats. Yeah. Nev Campbell, yeah, they're there. Ellen Page. Anna Paquin, whatever her name is. John Candy. Uh, one of the greats. SCTV. SCTV across the board, guys. Great crimes. Joshua Jackson. A lot of them there. A lot of names. I know so many. Look. Wow. Is Stephen Amell really Canadian? Victor Garber. He's Victor Garber, yeah. Garber, Phil Hartman. Tommy Chong. Is he can Tommy Chong's Canadian. I know Bruce Greenwood is because he used to watch like a lot of his shows. Matthew he was in Perry. Nowhere Man. Yes, a lot. <laughs> Logan takes Michael Ironside over all those guys. I agree. You know what? One of the best Michael Ironside, like like an underrated Michael Ironside role. Remember Watchers? It yeah. had Corey Haim in it. Yeah. Really, really cool film. 
<laughs> yeah, Ken, we just spoke at Beast Magic at the beginning, but great stuff. Uh, we're excited about that. We're both going to be pre-ordering uh, Beast and Magic Sword when, when that happens. Or ordering it. I think you're going to be able to order that one right out, aren't you? Um, but yeah, so there's a, a movie called Watchers, and it's kind of based on a Dean Koontz book. Uh, actually, the sequel is probably more strongly based on the book. Uh, uh, not soon enough for me, Logan. Uh, I haven't heard anything on Watchers come to Blu-ray yet. And when Watchers come to Blu-ray, there's another Dean Koontz book that didn't do as well when it came to the movie, but it was called Whispers. you remember this one? I'm sure Dina will remember. She like, it's a bit of a thriller. It's like John LeClerc. And uh, there's this, like, uh, author. And he's got, like, uh, he's, like, kind of, I think he's kind of, like, uh, stalking this, this girl. I'm sure he does. But he's got, this is a twin brother, like, portion to it. Um, if you've never seen Whispers, actually, it's, it's kind of cool. Gene LeClerc actually starred in, uh, in All My Children for years, actually. He played a character called Jeremy. Uh, he was, like, an artist. And his dad was, uh, oh, God, was a famous actor. Uh, Mitchell Ryan okay. on the show. Uh, Mitchell Ryan is, of course, from uh, everybody's favorite Halloween film, Halloween 6. He plays, he plays well, can we say who he plays? It's, it's been long enough that oh we can get God, the spot yes, right there. Yes. He plays the man in black, Dr. Wynn, um, who actually is played by a different actor in the first film uh, of, that I don't know, and, who, and pretty much he has that one line, that scene, basically, you know. You know, you can't be going to Haddonfield. He can't even drive. He was doing very well with it last night. That, 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 that's the big sequence. Oh, God, it's a horrible unpleasant. I'm not even going to try. Impression. I'm going to do, like, all the, what's the word? The anti-impression. Like, kind of like Arsenio Hall used to do. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Watchers is, is one I'm looking forward to. Mark Singer's in the sequel, that one. Watchers, so. I too. I can't remember as far back now. Uh, like, uh, Corey Haim. I don't have it in my and there's that twist in Watchers, and I don't want to give it away, and Logan, you know what the twist is I'm, that I'm talking about is, is that there's the really smart dog, and uh, we know, and there's a, a creature, there's like a monster that's kind of like tracking the dog, uh, but um, the thing that they talk about, and I won't give away what or who or whatever it could be, there's a third monster. Uh, and we find out in a really cool sequence like who and what that third monster is and it, it's pretty genius Servants of Twilight needs a blu-ray release. Do you remember that one? That? Servants, of, Servants of Twilight Vaguely, I, I know I've seen it. I'm just trying to <laughs> Four roads out to a hole. Halloween 4 <sighs> They could have went a lot of ways with it. I heard that Dominique oh, Othen Gerard, I guess that's his name uh, when he did part five, like a lot of those sequences, those Man of Black sequences, he didn't direct those. Uh, I'm not quite sure if that was him just trying to get out of it, uh, but uh, he, he did say that, you know, there are certain scenes that he just didn't do. Are there any films you love that only have a VHS release? Oh, I don't know. There's a few films that only have a DVD release that I can think about. Uh, but uh, like Fade to Black, for instance, has only ever gotten like, I think, an Anchor Anchor Bay DVD, yeah, right? DVD, yeah, Anchor yeah this, that got a DVD release. Uh, I can't think of anything that just got. For like a long time, I mean, like, I really wanted to return to Sam's Lot. Not a great movie, but I like it, Larry Cohen. Uh, but Warner Archives put that on Blu ray. The Kindred. I'm, yeah, there's one that actually. Yes, that's one on VHS. I don't know. I know I've seen it. I've had it. There's, there's a few. Actually. Nightlife. Yes, actually, that's Scott Grimes, right, Anne Reddy? Uh, I'm pretty sure that's Scott Grimes. If it's the one I'm thinking about, it's Scott Grimes. Scott Grimes is one of these like teen actors in the '80s, like was kind of a red hair. You, you know him as soon as you see him. Uh, but yeah, there's a there's a ton of these uh, of these people that uh, that we could actually, yeah. I can't think. I can't think of like I'm 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 basically running on on fumes right now. Yeah, I can't think of it. Uh, I I need tea, guys. I do apologize. I I do need tea. Uh, he's on Orville now. I haven't watched Orville yet. Or Orville is one of those shows that I keep going to watch, but I haven't watched yet. People tell me it's really, really good. Uh, ER, I didn't watch a lot. Uh, so I'm not a big like medical person. I think St. Elsewhere was about the most medical that I could get. Uh, and I, even that. Um, and, you know, a few episodes of House, right? A micro mask is a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> it's horrible, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, but, uh, but I find that like those... <laughs> uh, that a lot of those like hospital things, I get super paranoid, and I say, "Wow, I 
I think I've got some of those symptoms. Maybe I've got that strange, rare disease that one in one million and two people get. Maybe that's me. I, I would, I definitely, well, here, I'll sh just to show you how much I dig. I went to, to Dollarama today, that's the end of my video, I'll tell you. Uh, I like hospital like based horror films. I love X-Ray with uh, Bobby. I got this here one. These are at your, if you're in Canada, this, these are shown up at your local Dollarama for actually really cheap. And I got a next generation one because I'm going to be traveling tomorrow and I'm going to be doing some reading. What's really cool is that you get the IDW comics in the front. You get your gold key in the back. Party in the front, business in the back. All right. Thank you so much for watching tonight. This is my dad. It's been a blast having him here to do videos with because it's a lot easier to kind of kind of bounce off stuff than it is just to have me like, you know, boring you guys all the time. So we'll try to we'll try to get here so here's I'll, I'll try to get back soon sometime and we'll we'll make some other stuff together or I'll get my get my dad out. So, yes, request my dad on videos. We'll we'll see what we can do. Uh, and if you have and I do say if you've checked out just the disc, my episode drops next week. Please listen to that. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I talk about a lot of really different movies and uh, I pimp some weird stuff. So, including some intervision strangeness that I got from you. I am Aaron. This is my dad. You guys are the movie club. You guys are awesome. You guys rock. Uh, if you're not following, you know, hit, oh, what's the, they always say? Hit the, hit the like button, you know, do the whole subscribe and hit that little belly thing so that you're notified when the videos come out. Yeah, I'm not good with doing that, pimping my video stuff. But yeah, that's what they always say to say at the end. <coughs> Thank you for watching. I'm choking, so I got to go and uh, have a great night. And uh, tomorrow night, I'm on a boat.